I said before, um, there were, well, there's more than three, but I just thought of three um, last night while I was preparing for today. Um, there are at least three reasons why we actually care about polynomial division, not just because now, hooray, we can do it. Do you feel okay that you can do it, by the way? It's all right. The negatives do sort of send you for a spin the first time, but I promise you we'll get used to that as you go through, and you will. Um, but apart from that, just because we can, why do we care about this? Well, here's my first reason. I said before, if you want to understand what an object is doing, um, often what you'll do is manipulate it in some way, and it turns out that polynomial division is a great way to get into what's going on with any kinds of polynomials you get given. For example, I've given you a pair of cubics here, right? These two cubic equations. Can you do for me, can you trace out with your hand in the air, what's like the general shape when you graph a cubic function? What does it look like? Can you do it in your, in your, with your hand? Yeah, okay, all right, good. You did, did a couple of loops there, right? So it's going to be something like this, generally speaking, right? Now, it happens that I know this guy up here is going to have three roots. It's going to intersect with the x-axis three times like so, okay? But I can just as equally work out that this guy, without even graphing it, without going anywhere near that, I can work out that this only touches the axis once. It does this. Now, how did I work that out? And the answer is, if I go through polynomial division with either of these, right, you will find that this guy up here, it very nicely, neatly breaks up into one, two, three factors. And from each of those factors, you get the one, two, three roots. You're like, cool, I can find them, I can locate them, off I go and I graph, right? But if you were to try the same exercise with this, if you go through the division, what you'll find is it divides neatly, neatly rather, once, and then out the other end here, you get this weird quadratic. And this quadratic does not neatly factorize, right? It's one of those awkward ones, you're like, can't think of a number, don't want to complete the square, I'll give it quadratic formula, and then it spits out at you, sorry, no real solutions, right? Now what that's saying is, you'll get a solution here, one, this one here, and then you get no real solutions out of the rest of the equation. So we gain insight into what's going, what this polynomial is doing and how it behaves by performing polynomial division. Okay, there's the first thing. The second thing is integration. We know how to do some integration now, right? We know how, for example, to integrate this. This is pretty much as easy as it gets, right? But if I asked you to integrate this guy up here, you'd say, oh, gross, I don't know where to begin, right? Well, now that you know polynomial division, you're not all the way there, but you're part the way there. Because if I said, well, the integral of this, what do I do with that, right? Do you all agree? Remember, we just said this is an easy thing to integrate here, right? Like so, integral of this, dx, that would be easy to deal with, okay? <coughs> well, see this equation here? If I integrated the left-hand side, it stands to reason it would be the same thing if I also integrated the Right-hand side, do you agree with that? Is that okay? It's an equation, do something to the left, also do it to the right, okay? Well, I'm also going to divide by this. If I do it to the left, I will also do it to the right, okay? Yes, Chloe? Oh, okay. oh not at all? Really? Oh, boo! How sad. Never mind. Well, You're Okay, yeah, that's a bit yeah, sneaky. So you kind of sort of, yeah. Almost, okay, that's all right. I'm going to do the next bit anyway. Um, have a look at this guy here, right? And this is Daniel, what we were talking about before. How would you actually do the division? Well, what's nice about this is because I now have some common factors, namely this guy and this guy, right? There's some cancelling that can happen here, right? There's a little bit of cancelling. Um, what colour should I choose? No, I'm going to stick with this guy, right? I'm going to leave that big integral sign there. x minus 7, x plus 2, divided by x plus 2. What will cancel? The x plus 2s, right? So you're going to get left with that guy, right? What you get over here is, well, it's a bit awkward. It looks awkward anyway. Now, what's great about this is, <clears throat> when you do get to such a point as you can integrate, um, this guy totally behaves. This guy, I can find the primitive of x. You can tell me the primitive of x, right? Yes. x squared on 2, very good. You can tell me the primitive of negative 7, it's minus 7x, seven. Seven right? Now this guy, you won't learn until next year, but you can totally integrate. It turns out, well, I don't want to spoil it too much. Yeah, I'll leave it. It's a fun object that you might not expect, but it's actually one you've been dealing with for a long time, several years. So, integration, right? 
When you look at some things, you're like, I don't, know, I don't know what to do with this, right? But so much of your mathematical career has been taking problems that are insoluble, right? You're like, I don't know what to do with this. But if I can transform it in some way and keep all the objects the same, but it just looks a little bit different, I can turn it into a problem that actually I can handle, that ends up being quite simple, okay? All right, now, what's the last thing? Um, algebra, right? Of which polynomials is just like a, you know, a further along version of developed, right? The whole point of algebra is that you can deal with numbers and you can interact with them and understand them even when you don't know what their value is. Let me just say that again, because maybe you, like you guys generally are so good enough with the, the machinery of algebra that perhaps you never wondered why does this matter, right? We deal with numbers that we don't know their value all the time and we can still work with them. We can still understand them and use them to solve problems, okay? Now, I'd like you to do this with me. Um, get your calculator out, anything that you can just do some multiplication division with. And I want you to think of a number, any number that you like. I'm not going to put any boundaries on it, except can you make it a positive integer because we're going to do some division in a second. And okay, if you pick some, if you pick pi, you're going to have a bad time in a second. Okay, so pick a positive integer of any kind. You can make it big or you can make it small. It's up to you. Your number that you've just said for yourself. And please, by the way, make sure you pick something different to the person next to you because this will be boring if you both have the same thing. Okay. Pick your number, and then for said number, I'd like you to work out an easy thing and a bit of a harder thing. I want you to work out what x plus 1 will be. If your number is x, right, just add 1 to it. You're like, I don't need a calculator for that. And then write that down. For example, if your number is 581, then x plus 1 will be 582. That was not hard. Okay? This next bit is why I asked you to get a calculator out. Okay? I'm not going to expect you to work out what 581 squared plus 5 lots of 581 plus 7 is. But whatever your number happens to be, can you please square it and then add five lots of the same number and then add seven, okay? And you should get some number at the end. And in fact, I'm gonna go work out what mine is. Oh no. Oh, is your calculator done a fit? Okay, make it smaller just so your calculator can deal with it. 581. Did you go into did you go to scientific notation? Well done. What an overachiever. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is what I've got, right? Now, presumably you have two different numbers, right? Unless anyone else thought of 581? No one else did, right? Cool. Happy times, right? We only had all of the numbers in the universe to choose from, so hopefully you chose a different one, okay? Now here's what I want you to do. Um, I would like you to, and you can, I'm not going to put limitations on how you do it. There's going to be an easier way and a harder way. Um, I would like you please to divide your bigger number, right? This second result. Can you please divide it by the first one and then tell me the remainder. Actually, it so happens, like I was alluding to before, in this particular case, the remainder is the only thing I'm interested in. Now, just go ahead and do that. But keep it secret from the person you're working it out next to, okay? So go ahead, do the division, work out your remainder, please. Bam. <laughs> That's what we come to morning class for, right? For amazing insights like that. Can you raise your hand for me if you've done the division and have a remainder? Don't tell me what it is, just tell me if you've got a remainder. Yep. Okay, I'm still waiting on a couple more. Put your hands down, thank you. Some people out the back chose really ridiculous huge numbers, that's okay. Take away the answer. Yes, yes. Is it? So you're dividing this by this, right? Yeah. You got that. So 23 is the quotient, right? It's the quotient. I want the remainder. Yes? <laughs> oh, I need my thing. <laughs> okay, now, I wonder if we can do this together, right? Hopefully at this point, even if not everyone, most people have found out their remainder by now, right? On the count of three, I'm going to ask us all to say it out loud. Your individual remainder, okay? Are you ready? Count of three. Three, two, one. <laughs> Jacob's confused. That's okay. Um, that's interesting. You all got the same remainder I did. I got a remainder of 
three, at least you did get the same remainder if you perform your division correctly, okay? By the way, you might have also noticed, if you went through that, you might have noticed your quotient was also exactly four bigger than what you divided by. Did you notice that, right? Now, how did I know that? How did I know we would all come up with this? And the answer is, when you divide x, plus, x squared plus 5x plus 7 by x plus 1, if you do this polynomial division, okay, then the quotient that you get at the end, let's call it q of x, right? All of you, if you give this a go, will get a quotient of x plus 4, right? 4 bigger than the number you started with. And you will all find a remainder of 3, right? Now, what's brilliant about this is if you have a go at this guy here, okay? Do this division as a polynomial, okay? I will leave this as an exercise to the reader. If you do the division, it will take about, um, I rubbed it all off, but it will take about three sets of going through that. Um, divide, multiply, subtract, carry. Then divide, multiply, subtract, carry. It'll do about three lots of that, okay? But if you were really adventurous and you chose some ridiculously huge number, right? If you did the numerical division, the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more like brain numbing, the bigger the number is. That makes sense, it just takes longer and longer to divide, right? But this guy always stays as simple to divide as just these nice, simple, single digit whole numbers, okay? So you see, I'm trying to illustrate for you that algebra gives you this superpower to see, understand all these different objects, even when I don't even know what any of your numbers were. I didn't choose them, you chose them, and I didn't even ask you to tell me but I can still, through algebra, right, that's the whole point of it, I can know there is a pattern going on underneath through polynomial division, just like every other technique you've learned, okay? So, I'm going to hit pause there. Um, if you haven't already, um, open up your textbooks. But does anyone have any questions? Any step here that was a bit weird and confusing that they want clarification on? I don't know what um, like, how do you get it? How do you do, you're talking about with numbers, right? Is that what you're asking for? Okay, so you're talking about this part, like this part here? Okay, so for those of you who are like, how do I do this with my calculator? It doesn't just give me a quotient and remainder. Yeah. The cheap and easy way is like so, okay? If you do this, if you put this into your calculator, uh -huh. right? My calculator will tell me that the answer is 585 points, some weird stuff that I don't know, okay? Now, this 585 here, the whole number, that's the quotient. That's however many whole lots of your divisor you can fit in there. Right? And then this guy over here, what it represents is your remainder. Right? That's the leftover. It's not a whole lot of your divisor. It's a, it's a part of your divisor. Okay? So the way to work out, okay, well, what is the leftover is you can reverse engineer this using, using the statement that we showed you before. Right? You can say, okay, 340,473, right? Yeah. It's going to be equal to 585. I got that from the calculator display. Multiplied by 581, I got that, that's my original divisor that I chose, plus some other stuff, right? Well, if you want to find out what some other stuff is, you use algebra again. You're like, I don't know what it is, let's just give it a name, like R for remainder. And then, if I want to solve for R, what do I do? I just... I just... I just subtract from both sides, right? Whatever this guy is... Right? If I subtract that from both sides, I will just be left with R on the right-hand side. Are you content with that? Right? Um, one of the things that's really wonderful here is, uh, at least I don't remember ever being taught that when I was in Year 7. Um, or even if you were taught that, you probably forgot. <laughs> but this is all simple arithmetic that you actually do know. It's just, can you bend your brain into the right shape to use all that existing knowledge in a bit of an unusual, unfamiliar way?